just a second for the setting. Okay. Okay. The second presentation, it's about diagnostic workup for patients with impending and pathologic fracture due to metastasis. So, during this uh, speech, uh, I will talk about the difference between impending and pathologic fracture and the impact on uh, survival and economic burden. Then we will evaluate the different scoring system for uh, fracture risk. Bone metastases are very old friends of humans. Uh, this skulls uh, published in our book uh, comes from the Roman Imperial Age. Um, and uh, during the oncologic, oncologic disease, we know that uh, their complication in the bones are called, are called skeletal related events, and they have a negative impact on uh, health related quality of life, autonomy of the patient and increasing pain. Our goal, uh, the orthopedic goals, uh, are to prevent it. And in the clinical practice, this issue is called to recognize and treat the impending fracture. With this lesion, um, the approach to um, lesions like that can differ from, depends on, on surgeon's ex expertise, but uh, the one who will choose the surgical indication of prophylactic fixation has already made a diagnosis of an impending fracture. That was defined in 2000 by Ile, controversial, and still in 2015, seems to have no specific definition. <clears throat> and the word used was a fear of impending fracture. We all know that the bone has more strength in compression and bending forces, but is weaker in torsional forces, uh, and the small hole can reduce by 50% the strength of in torsion. Not all of us will surgically treat this lesion, probably, but uh, I'm sure that 100% of us we will treat this other one. Because if we do not treat it, um, then a fracture, of course, will occur, and of course, the treatment of nailing. But the question is, uh, is there a difference if we wait um, for the patient, of course, in uh, autonomy, disability, and pain, uh, but uh, there is also a difference uh, well recognized in reduction of surgical complication and uh, lengthening in patient survival. But also uh, there is a different impact uh, of pathologic fracture Jonathan Fosberg has well demonstrated how the complete pathologic fracture has an impact um, much more strong in short survival patient and uh, rather than a long survival patient. Also, it's well demonstrated that the inpatient stay has the main impact in the economic burden of skeletal related event with the suggestion to treat impending fracture rather than pathologic fracture by the orthopedic surgeons uh, that will reduce of the half the length of stay and of the 40% the cost applied to this pathology. That's why from the 80s, several scoring system has been developed to assess the fracture risk. One of the most famous is the Arrington criteria and uh, in which uh, bone destruction, length of the lesion, and clinical factor as a pain are put together. It is difficult to apply in this lesion uh, that, are, that have a permeative pattern uh, because we don't see really the border of the lesions. But the most famous uh, is the Marrett scoring system with uh, a score from uh, uh, in three points for site radiographic appearance, uh, um, uh, dimension of the lesion, bone involvement, and the pain. It is easy to apply in the clinical setting, but it has problem with sensitivity and specificity, um, leading to an overestimation of the fracture risk and useless surgical procedures. So, during this year, several study, well, this study as uh, was written to improve the Marrett scoring system. Uh, the pain was the main problem of this score. Uh, it doesn't account the analgesic effect uh, and there's uh, inter-observer discordance. Um, a way uh, to improve it is to graduate the pain uh, and the independent factor is a vast major than six uh, and the upper limb lesion, a humeral lesion in which the torsional forces are higher. 
During years, several studies have tried to give quantitative assessment to the fracture risk with a city-based biomechanical model using finite elements. They are, mm, without any doubt, stronger than the Myrels, uh, but have several limitations. One of the most is that they are difficult to apply in the clinical setting during the visit in an outpatient clinic. This study is really interesting. Uh, I think it's one of the um, more interesting prospect in the future. It's the applica comes from the memorial and it's the application of the FG FDG PET CT in the risk fracture in uh, all no, in all the four parameters of the exam. It is demonstrated a correlation with the risk factors. It's very important because it gives us the aggressiveness of the lesion. So if, if it, everything is so clear, the question is: Do we all do the same things? Um, this is the graphic uh, published in uh, with Jonathan Fosberg and uh, Ricard Verdin in uh, 2015, in which it seems that the Italian patient survived more at three months and 12 months compared to the American and Scandinavian one. But if we look at, vari at the other variables, uh, there was a selection of the patient uh, uh, for surgical indication, um, there seems to be a better prognosis, uh, less multiple metastases in the bone and less visceral metastases. If we look at the um, um, trending of treat uh, impending and pathologic fracture, American set and the Italian set um, were, uh, were assessed at about 50%. And in the Sweden set, uh, they treat much more pathologic fracture than the impending one. This is a demonstration that the trend of treating impending fraction can be differed by country and reflect the uh, cultural surgical indication sometimes. So in conclusion, pathologic fracture should be always pre prevented if possible, and treating an, the impending fracture has an impact in survival and health cost. We should evaluate uh, the fracture risk carefully, and the CT scans so with the PET-CTs can be a complementary exam. Thank you for your attention.